Repeat this after me. To reach my wealthy place, reach my wealth. I, must I must obey God. Hmm. Psalms 112 verse 3, and you can take note of it. It says, wealth and riches shall be in your house. But it says, wealth and riches shall be. Now, shall be is conditional. Amen. It shall be. It shall be providing that I do something. It doesn't mean it's going to automatically be in your house, but shall be is conditional. Now, Isaiah 1 and 19 says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land or you shall eat the wealth of the land. But that's conditional, willing and obedient. Now, those are two key things. See, you can obey, but not necessarily willing. But you've got to be willing and obedient. You see, some folks obey, but they're not always willing. You see, if you're willing, to be willing is to purpose your will to act. See, when you're willing, it's done on purpose. No one has to twist your arm or twist your neck or coerce you or none of those things. But to be willing, it's on purpose. To purpose your will. I purpose my will to do this. In other words, your purpose, or rather you purpose in your heart to obey. You purpose in your heart to obey. See, you don't just obey because you don't want to deal with the consequences. And sometimes we do that, you know. Uh, I pay my tax. I don't want to be cursed. You don't just do it just for that reason. Yeah, I come to church because I don't want God to get me. See, we, we can obey but not necessarily willing. But if we're going to eat the good of the land or the wealth of the land, we've got to be both willing and obedient. Amen. And willing is not trying. It's not trying, but it's doing on purpose. See, many times, and, and we can mean well, you know, we say, well, I'm going I'm to try. See, you're not committed. See, there is no trying. It's do. I see some of you looking like, uh, I'd be trying. Well, now, I don't want to so don't, don't raise your hand, but most of us don't try to go to work. You know, you, you didn't tell your boss on Friday, well, you know what, I'm a, I ain't sure. I'm going to try to make it in on Monday. We're committed to it, so we do. Now, you don't have to turn to it. 2 Corinthians one twenty says, all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. See, everything in this word, especially dealing with finances, they are prophetic promises. God has promises to us. You see, a promise is, I'm going to do this for you. But now there's something a little different called the oath of God. Quickly go to Jeremiah, the 11th chapter of Jeremiah. Now, you all are going to have to, because I'm going to move quick. So, you know, when I go to these books, go to your table of contents. Nobody ain't looking at you because you don't know where Jeremiah is or John. Forget that person. Just go to the front, and you can just go right to the page. That don't mean you don't know God or don't know the Bible. I'm the Reverend. I don't know all of these six, six books in order. Is that a wasting time? Go to the front. Jeremiah, the 11th chapter. Verse 1 says, The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all which I command you. So shall ye be my people, and I will be your God. Verse 5. That I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing, with silk and money. <laughs> yeah, I said that milk and honey. Everybody don't like milk and honey. But silk is all right and money is all right. As it is this day, then answered I and said, so it be, O Lord. Now, as I said, promise God is saying, uh, 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 I'm going to do this for you. But this oath, oath means to be complete. Oath means it is now ready to be released. 
So we understand the promises of God, but now God is talking about an oath. In other words, I promised you to get you in your wealthy place, but now when I make my oath, wealthy place is ready to be released. But now, a promise becomes an oath, because many of us, we're still in the promise stage and haven't reached, reached the oath stage. But a promise becomes an oath when obedience is fulfilled. Oh, Jesus. Now, quickly go to Genesis 12. 12th chapter of Genesis, first book of the Bible. Now, I've taught this many, many times before. There are three lands <laughs> that every single person in this earth lives in. And there's a land that God wants to show us. 12th chapter of Genesis, verse 1 says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And as I said, there are three lands. What are those three lands? There's the land of not enough. There's the land of just enough. And there's the land of more than enough. Now, most folks live in that first land. Most folks live in the land of not enough. I did some research and I gave these statistics before. And this is, I'm not sure what it is last year, but in 2005, 37 million folks in this country lived below the poverty level. I didn't say at the poverty level. It's like you poor and broke, but 37 million lived below that. Now, the ratio like that, that means, oh, at least probably half of us in here lived be below. People were in debt totaling $115 billion. You say million, billion. Over 2 million people filed bankruptcy. The average person, when they retire, the average person cannot write out a $5,000 check. Ain't that something? You didn't worked at the plant for 30 years, 40 years. You have your good retirement party, and they give you a watch and a plaque. And then when it's all said and done, the average person cannot write a $5,000 check. Oh, my. Hmm. So now. Most folks, including us saints who talk in tongues and shout and lay hands on the sick, many of us are in that land of not enough. Amen. Now, you don't have to raise your hand. Let me just give, throw you out a quick verbal questionnaire. How many folks, don't raise your hand, don't. Since you've been saved, we ain't talking about before you got saved. Since you've been born again. Holy Ghost feel. How many folks have had your utility shut off, got evicted, foreclosed, wrote a bounce check, filed bankruptcy, been on aid, Section 8, unpaid bills, headed for the collection agency, maxed out your credit cards? Don't raise your hand. We talking about since you've been A.K. Kobashando. <laughs> so now, this land of not enough is simply never having enough to fulfill your personal obligations. It's just never enough. It's like you always, as they say, robbing Peter to pay Paul. In other words, uh, if you pay your light bill this month, you can't pay the gas bill. Yeah. 